Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm back home in Paris. Absolutely fantastic. I had like a great, great journey to get here. But uh, everything's getting a bit better in Europe, which is good. And I hopefully it's it's getting better where, where you are as well. Uh, well, so today's video is actually uh, kind of a request or a, um, a suggestion from a, from a subscriber. Thank you very much, Amanda, for this lovely suggestion. So today's subject is how to stay, to stay motivated to run during this crazy pandemic that's happening. And I think everyone's going through lots of motivation issues with, with everything that's going on in their lives, whether it be athletics or it's professional or it's something from like a relationship perspective, but it's, it's a really weird, bizarre time for everybody. I think especially considering that athletics isn't necessarily a, a necessity for a lot of people. It was maybe like it was a social thing or something to kind of, and I think if you're, if you're feeling a little demotivated, it's, it's probably pretty normal. So when we get down to it, I mean, athletics isn't necessarily like a priority um, in, in the grand scheme of things, right? It's something we do for enjoyment and uh, when there's like this crazy pandemic and like the whole world's in this kind of shock and you have like the very, you're questioning your very existence, your function, your freedoms, you know, if maybe you're trapped inside um, from like a government standpoint, from a legal standpoint, I mean, you start to question a lot of things. And so I think naturally athletics might fall down a little bit on the, on the spectrum of importance. But with that, if you're feeling demotivated, maybe you're like a really big, big, big runner and it's, it's been a really big part of your life and suddenly you find yourself not being motivated to do it, I wouldn't feel guilty. So please don't feel guilty with yourself if you're not feeling like feeling like your normal, spry, happy, go lucky, love to train, passionate about the challenge. No matter what your level is, whether you're a beginner or if you happen to be some kind of professional watching this or something, if if you feel guilty about not being motivated to do your your task, I. I would take a deep breath and, and try not to, to try not to blame yourself. So I'll give you some of the things that I've been doing to, to stay motivated because I've also been injured during this time too, which kind of sucks. Um, running was always a way for me to de-stress and if I can't de-stress in a very stressful situation, it can be kind of like a, like a double whammy. So there's two things. The, the first thing that I would say is think of any, any weaknesses you have in regards to running and then hopefully you can work on those weaknesses in this interim. So for example, with me, a lot of my injury problems over the last six months or so came from uh, weak core and specifically weak hips. What I've been doing has been single leg glute bridges. <laughs> I've been doing internal and external rotation exercises for the hips, targeting more of like kind of the gluteus minimus, the glute, gluteus medius. I've been doing single leg squats. I've been doing jumping lunges, speed skaters, which are plyometric exercise for the glute medius, and a little bit of the glute maximus. And I've also been doing lots of core strength. So I've been doing flags. I did it in, in this video. And then one of the biggest things that I've been doing kind of I'm getting back in touch with has been some more gymnastic strength stuff. So I used to do gymnastics in university, like for fun, I was on gymnastics club team. I've noticed over the, the last year or two, like my I haven't, well, I haven't been really doing anything from a strength standpoint. And so my actual muscle conditioning has gone down. Like my, my overall strength has gone down. It wasn't really a problem for me because I was running like 70, 80 miles a week. And I didn't really, you know, if the running was going well, then why focus on something else kind of deal. So what I did notice though, was that over the last six months, eight months, nine months, I've been having like weird neck problems and back problems because I'm like literally losing strength. So instead of like standing up straight, I'm like kind of... You know, losing strength in your your traps, your back muscles, your neck, your neck muscles, your your trapezius, your, your, everything that kind of keeps you have a nice that, that lets you have like a nice posture with your shoulders pulled back. The, the muscle strength has been progressively decreasing. So I've been doing lots of handstands. Hey, Stan. Kind of going back to my gymnastic roots, 
doing handstands, getting like the traps and getting the shoulder extension, scapular retraction. And so you have all this glute hip core stuff, which is basically making sure that when I'm running my, my pelvis is, is neutral and it's flat and it's uh, it, all the power can kind of go in a linear fashion instead of like tilting. I talk about hip drop in this video. I've been doing exercises now so that when I do start my heavy training, I'm much less susceptible to, to injury because of these weaknesses that I've had, these muscle imbalances that I've developed over the last six or eight months. And then I've also been doing the handstand stuff so that my 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 core and my posture and specifically like my, my shoulders and my, my arms can be pulled back a bit when I'm running and then my arm swing is a lot more linear as well. So I'm not, I'm not having any crossover. I'm able to stay nice and forward and straight like that. And also I'm not getting feeling like my neck's getting sore just from working at a computer during the day and stuff, you know? Those are some things that I've been doing. I think I think muscle weaknesses or imbalances are really common for, for, for all of us, you know, as runners. You just kind of develop them naturally. So I would encourage you to do a few benchmark tests to see if you have any. I did, and I would do unilateral exercises, so like one leg at a time. So I, I wouldn't do squat test. I would do like a one-legged squat test. Or if you can't do a full pistol squat, then you could do like a like a half squat where you drag your leg back. I can make another video on this in the future if you guys would like, um, kind of about like benchmarking tests for for muscle strength and muscle imbalance. But I'll try to link something below just to give you guys something to kind of to kind of cruise over and look for, where you could do like a little self assessment while you're hanging out at home, you know, and just see like, oh, you know what, my like for me, uh, like my left calf, I can do like 70 calf raises off a step, like in one go, and on my right leg, I can only do like 30 or something. So like that's something I didn't realize before and so I can work on it now. And so I'll try to link something that'll kind of help uh, point you guys in the right direction for that below. Or if you'd like, just, just leave a comment. I, I can make a video on it the next time. So the second thing that I would say, besides looking for something kind of tangible like this, in order to stay mentally motivated and there's no competitions around, there's no races in the fall, which is kind of what Amanda was asking specifically in her comment. What are you gonna do? Like a lot of people run so that they compete, they like to compete, but if there's no races, I, guys, I don't know if there's going to be anything in the fall either. Uh, well, what, kind of like, what's the point, right? So I've been actually kind of talking to my friend, Dr. Bob, about this quite a bit to kind of come up with ways to get around this. Unfortunately for myself, I just like the training and stuff. Like I'm one of those people, I just, um, I just like going out and running a lot, even if there's no races on the calendar. But one thing that's been really, um, really important, really, really good for me to consider has been um, laying out benchmark tests uh, with consequences. So maybe you're in a place, well, hopefully you can run in some capacity at this point. I think the world's getting a little more, it's opening up a bit more as of May 19th. As of May 19th, I think everything's getting a little more opened up. So hopefully you can go training. So now it's a question of well, what am I training for? I would train to compete with yourself. Have some kind of benchmark test you can set up and so that you can see, you can have some kind of some kind of goal, some kind of target to shoot for, which gives yourself a bit of a target, so that you can kind of hold yourself accountable in a way. So, for example, every month I want to start doing like a one mile timed run, let's say, and I want to start doing a, a 20 minute tempo. And the idea is that you know after six months there's been a there's been an improvement. So. It's not like I'm I'm racing a 20 minute tempo, but uh, a 20 minute tempo is 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 one component of let's say a marathon and a half marathoner's training regime. And if you're doing the shorter distances, it's a component of that too. But that something that could tell me that I'm improving my fitness, right? I say, okay, cool. Well, it's 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 May 19th right now, so so June 20th, I want to run a 20 minute tempo, and I want to do. At the moment, I'm doing six minute miles, let's say, and you know, by then I want to be doing 540 miles, just for example. So, okay, cool. So now I can kind of structure my training a little bit and consider that when I'm training so that I can kind of look forward to that date. I have a little bit of a competition with myself. Maybe the day that it comes, I, I, I treat it just as I would for well, any hard workout, but maybe I treat it the same as I would for a race. Maybe I have like the same breakfast, try to wake up around the same time, wear the same shoes, get myself in the right mental state before, you know? And I would do the same thing if it was a timed mile or whatever whatever the, the benchmark might be. And then another thing is uh, if you find yourself, maybe that's not quite, maybe you still can't quite hold yourself to it, like you're not, you're not treating it as seriously as you think you should. You're not really as responsible to the goal as you should, then I would create a consequence, which is something I've been working with Dr. Bob on. So for example, if I don't, 
do my 20 minute run at um, the perfect effort and intensity and really close to the pace I want, um, then I won't eat chocolate for a week or something. And I love chocolate. You guys, it kind of be a little like, oh, well, you know, I really, I would, I would, I don't want to not eat chocolate for a week because I like eating chocolate. So maybe I'll kind of take this a little more seriously than, than I have been before. So I talked about, we talked about like the physical stuff you can do to kind of test yourself. And so if you're in a down period now, cause there's no races and you're doing less training and whatever, you can work on your weaknesses and you can do it from your house typically. One-legged squats and one-legged group, group bridges and hamstring curls and stuff. You can do those anywhere. But then like kind of the mental side of it, I would for sure create some kind of benchmarks or trials for yourself. So. Uh, one thing I have is a, a four by one mile at tempo pace plus four by 200 meters. And the idea, and I take the heart rate, I take the pace, I, t I write down the effort, and I wanna try to keep the, the important thing with your benchmarks is to keep the same conditions. So try to run it on the same track or the same route on the road uh, at the same time of day, same temperature if possible, similar temperature, same shoes, same clothing, same nutrition. The idea is to keep it as consistent as possible, the benchmark, uh, so that you can have a good measurement of improvement, or maybe you don't improve for some reason, then you can look back and see why. But make sure you're consistent in how you set up your benchmarks so that you can accurately track yourself and be motivated by the progress that you're seeing. And guys, there will be races in the future, it just might be a while. So mentally be okay with that and settle for some races with yourself. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention you guys, so I, I'm excited to announce I, I opened up I started a, a patreon like a real patreon with like tiers and levels and more specifically actually things that can benefit you guys so I, I decided to do this uh, I'm really excited to do it as a way to kind of to work to really help you more to specifically address you and your concerns and your goals and your aspirations. And I'll be acting as more of like, like a coach. We have like YouTube and I'm kind of like presenting content in an entertaining way and it's, it's informative and it's helpful and it's free, right? Great. But maybe some people, maybe some of you would like a little more and you're interested in kind of pursuing, kind of having more specific feedback to, for yourself. So that's why I created this little Patreon. It's kind of fun and it ranges from anywhere from something like, like a little weekly newsletter, which is just like my thoughts and opinions on a specific health or fitness topic to something much more in depth and much more specific to you where you could become essentially kind of like one of my clients and I can be, very much be like one of your, like your, your coach and your teammates. And so this one I'm like super excited about and basically I want to help you get to your ultimate fitness goals. I want to be part of that, of that journey and I want to lend any, any, you know, experience and expertise that I can lend and, and hopefully help you get there. And so at the moment it's, it's limited though to like five people. I can't do more than five people. So as soon as five people sign up, I, I, I have to cut it off and I'll just have, you can only do like the other tiers in terms of kind of what's possible on Patreon. I would love to be able to commit more time and, and hopefully as this becomes something more of a full-time endeavor, I can, I can then devote more time to it. But I think at, at, for sure at the moment, I can't do more than five people on that, that topmost tier, you know, where I'm like your personal trainer, your personal coach. Because I want to make sure that I'm delivering the highest quality possible service that I can be. So I want to make sure I'm not spreading myself too thin. But that's it, you guys. Um, I will link the Patreon below. Please check it out. Um, I'd love for you to kind of become part of the channel a bit more and a bit more involved. And yeah, so wherever you guys are, I hope you're staying safe and um, you're practicing social distancing. And you're, you're trying to stay motivated through this kind of really bizarre, weird, crazy time. And you're not losing a semblance of who you are as a person, as a runner. Try not to. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching and happy 1000 subscribers again. And bonjour from Paris. And I will see you guys on the next video. All right, cheers.